Hold it. Get out the record books. Again. The Reavers rolling up the points once again. How many this time? Time for Lewis Central to pay a visit to St. Albert. Only who paid the piper? No one saw it coming. It's the coming of a new age at Heartland Christian. The Eagles fly with the big boys. Big showdown at AL. The Lynx and the Saints. Need I say more? Okay. The Bluff Sports Zone starts right now. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you had a pleasant Labor Day weekend. For us, it starts Friday night, August 31st. Lewis Central makes the trip to St. Albert. Now, as everybody knows, a lot of subplots in this one. The coaches, the kids, as the Titans and the Falcons meet for the 14th year in a row, St. Albert winning the last three. Last time they shook on at the Val Lieber Field, two years ago, the Falcons stuck it to the Titans 41-7. Soon after the opening kickoff, St. Albert here fumbles. Mason Brinkman recovers. LC's in business with the Falcon 25. Two plays later, Austin Simmons for Luke Harrison, number 16, 14 easy yards, seven to zip, LC, and little did the stat guy know. The Titans looking for more. Simmons, eight of nine in the first half to the end zone. Not this time. Eric Johnson picks it off, but St. Albert fumbles it away again. Alex Reed, easy pickings from 12 yards out. 14 to zip, Lewis Central. Second quarter now, the super sophomore Austin Simmons, little pitch route to Mark Savage. The senior catches four balls for 115 yards, including got it this 23 yard for a touchdown, 21 nothing LC. Getting a little hairy for the home team. The Titans D on a mission. 13 tackles for losses. Look out, Zach Renshaw with the crushing hit. Still in the second, third and 10 from the St. Albert 26. Simmons to Luke Harrison, first down. The senior grabs six for 76. Sam Duggan sneaks it in, 28 zip Titans at the half. The Falcons hoping to regroup. At some point, you just got to kind of take some responsibility for the way you played in the first half, both the coaches and the players. And we tried to rally, tried to do some good things, and uh, uh, they just dominated us. Come on, Jimmy, let's go, baby. Come on, Falcons, oh, we got to come out this half. Let's show some what we're made of, baby. We come back, let's go. Tucker Coljack did all he could from the sidelines, hurt his left side, didn't play in the second half. Third quarter, more of the same. The Lewis Central defense like scalded dogs. St. Albert, just 76 yards of total offense. Alex Reed, a somewhat quiet 105 yards on the ground. <laughs> Nothing quiet about that. A 57-yard touchdown. The Titans run away from the Falcons' 48 zip. I knew coming in our defense was so well, we're going to hang our hat on. Hanfin and those uh, coaches do a tremendous job getting those kids schemed up every week. And uh, you know the kids just uh, they, they play to the they play to the scheme. What hell of an effort, son! I think it was the drive by the seniors. I mean, we really wanted this one for us personally and for Coach Duggan. A little redemption, if you will, for our embarrassing loss a couple years ago. But I think we made it up and more tonight. Coming from St. Albert, you know, is the biggest thing for my dad, and we knew that going in. So the senior class came together, how they really should have came together, and I can't be more happy. The line played great, and the defense gave up no points. It's easy to make plays from there. Shake their hand. Okay, and you told me. We uh, got dominated on offense, we got dominated on defense, we got dominated on special teams. We got out coached, we got out played, we got out hit, we are out conditioned, and our scoreboard didn't work. Other than that, it was a great night. That's a good football team. St. Albert's going to be a good football team. The score really doesn't indicate the two turnovers and things like that, you know. I mean, it, it just changed the, the chemistry of the game so fast, but we got a good football team too, and I'm proud as heck of them. The Lewis Central fans, loud and proud. The Titans on key with their second shutout in a row. One word, wow. Yeah. 
the numbers say it all. St. Albert, look at that, under 100 yards of total offense. Austin Simmons, a big night for Lewis Central. Mark Savage, as you saw, some big catches. And it did seem like the Titans were in the Falcons' backfield all night with over a dozen TFLs, tackles for losses. Next up to Lewis Central, the Titans hit the road again at Indianola. St. Albert, back home once again against Panorama. AL, still winless as Harlan knocks off the links 21-7. Dylan Garner just 60 yards on the ground. Jared Thompson scored the game's only touchdown for AL. The Lynx, as you can see, four turnovers, and you can't win games that way. Next up for Justin Camrad and company, tackle unbeaten TJ. That's right, the Yellow Jackets are 2-0 for the first time since 2003, as TJ outguts Glenwood 28-26. The Jackets outgained, but make the plays when they have to. The Dominator, Dominic Wilson, couple of touchdown passes. Ja'Kai Gregory, his first varsity touchdown, sets the tone, kicking off the game with an 80-yard kickoff return for six. How about DB Matthew Ray's big fourth quarter pick? All in at TJ. Next up, AL, as I said, at CD Stadium. Should be a good one. Did someone say a good one? How about a great one? Greater than last week even? Of course, I'm talking the Reavers. You will not want to miss this. No team covers Southwest Iowa sports like the team at Jenny Edmondson Sports Medicine. For nearly 25 years, Jenny Ed Sports Med certified athletic trainers have cared for thousands of area athletes and their schools. And our partnering physicians at Nebraska Orthopedics help ensure you're taken care of from diagnosis through rehab. If you need to be seen now, come by our Saturday morning walk-in clinic. It's open all fall from 8 to 9.30 a.m. Jenny Edmondson Sports Medicine. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. What does the world need? Iowa Western. The world is waiting. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone brought to you by Cutler O'Neill, Meyer Woodring, family owned funeral home, serving Council Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for over 100 years. I mean, what could they do for an encore? I mean, you'd think 77 points is enough. Well, think again. The eighth ranked Reavers were at it again. I dub on the road again. It's called the Mile High Shootout. In the end, it was no such thing. In fact, it wasn't even close. Road game coverage brought to you by Ginny Edmondson Sports Medicine. First real test of the season for the number eight Reavers taking on number 15 New Mexico military on neutral ground in Pueblo, Colorado on the offense clicking early. Jake Waters' 11 yard touchdown run puts IDUB up seven zip. Down 13 later in the quarter, the Broncos find Pater Jacob Jamison. Nice scamper near side, and at 13-7, we have a ball game. New Mexico military got their game face on. Until the next time I Western's offense takes the field, Aaron Wimberley scores from five yards out to push the lead back to 13. And from then on, the route is on. Reavers up 27-7 in the second quarter. Wimberley back to work. The Iowa State recruit busts off 85 more of his 154 yards on just 14 carries. Iowa Western running away up by 27. Speaking of big time performances, Dion Long, a huge day. This three yard touchdown catch, part of a record setting game. The Maryland recruit, just a phenomenal performance. Get this. 20 catches for 256 yards and three scores. 
Iowa Western President Dr. Dan Kinney has to be happy with the Reaver O as they rack up a school record 709 yards of total offense, scoring a school record 83 points as they blast number 15 New Mexico Military 83 to 22. You know, I'm pleased with our kids' effort. You know, we, we came in and, and you know I challenged them to, to come out strong, and, and they came out strong. We we did it in all phases of the game and got some big plays, and you know we put ourselves in a position where they're trying to play catch up the entire game. I mean, um, you know we got some firepower on offense, and we played well on defense. You know, basically uh, came out, you know, kind of slow a little bit, but we speeded up a little bit. Um, offense, you know, went fast. You know, that got kind of got us and helped us out and um, we executed what we did. Where do I begin? The Reavers, 709 total yards, 500 in the first half. Jake Waters threw for a career best over 400 yards, four touchdowns. A record setting day for Dion Long. The Maryland recruit catches a school record 20 balls for 246 yards and three TDs, 19 for over 200 in the first half and so on. Oh yeah, the 83 points, the most ever in the four year history of Iowa Western football. It's like a video game. Next up for IDUB, third straight road game at Trinity Valley in Texas. Now winning is contagious. Everyone, as you can see, is winning. The 10th ranked women's volleyball team now 10-0. IDUB next up at the Reavers, on the road in Columbus, Nebraska, Friday night, September 7th. The seventh ranked men's soccer team wins a game and ties a match. Shut out Lincoln College three to zip on Sunday, August 2nd. The guys are now 2-0-1. The Reavers next tackle Iowa Lakes at home on September 7th. The 15th ranked ladies run their record to four zip and one. Outscored their opponents 19-1 so far. Blank nemesis Lewis and Clark five nothing on Friday, August 31st. Now IW is back home as well Friday, September 7th against Iowa Lakes. A school with a heart has been moved up to the varsity, where Eagles dare when we come back. If green and gold never gets old, then St. Albert Sports Fan is the place for you. Updated daily, it's loaded with articles, archives, and so much more. And if you can't make the game, you can still watch it live from the comfort of your own computer. St. Albert Sports Fan, the homepage for the home team. At Council Bluff Savings Bank, our goal is to help you, your families, and your businesses grow and prosper for generations. We take pride in our community, whether it's volunteering our time or helping individuals, families, and businesses succeed. We provide you with the personal service and attention you deserve. With over 220 years of banking experience, decisions are made locally. We are Council Bluffs people operating at Council Bluffs Bank to help Council Bluffs be a better place to work and live. Council Bluffs Savings Bank, hometown banking, the way it used to be. Member FDIC. Hi, how are you doing today? Uh, what looks good? Our special today is shrimp scampi. It's been sitting around for about a week. Excuse me, what time are you guys leaving? We're gonna rob your house tonight. Don't you wish there were warnings to protect you from life's risks? With diabetes, there is one. It's called A1C, a simple blood test that helps measure your risk of a heart attack and other complications. Learn more at diabetesa1c.org. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone, brought to you by the St. Albert Alumni Association. Eight-man football, there's nothing like it. Win or lose, a lot of fun, a lot of points, and a lot of chances to get your name in the stat book. And they're doing just that at Heartland Christian, as the Eagles are playing varsity football for the very first time this season. Now Heartland won its first game, dropped its second, and then came round three, Friday night, August 31st. Go Hartland Christian looking to run with Coon Rapids Bayard. First quarter, Brett Carstens just rifles one to Kaler D. The Crusaders on the board first. CRB led 13 to six in the second, fourth and 11. Carstens to deep again, 26 Crusaders, but Coach Struck not worried. We're gonna get back here, we're gonna score a touchdown, we're gonna be right back in it. Get a water break, cool off. Go. But the Eagles here, their own worst enemy. Coon Rapids Bayard recovers. Moments later, number two again, Brett Carstens, 27 to six. The visitors just racking up the points. Carstens again from 21 yards out, 34 to six, Crusaders. But on the ensuing kickoff, Gabe Clare, clear, cuts it up. Yeah, yeah. 
72 yards. Hartman Christian strikes right back. The sophomore, just a little winded. But still in the second, Coon Rapids Bayard runs right back again. Number two, again. And again, the Eagles here, their own worst enemy. That's a fumble, and the Crusaders recover. Once again, Karsten's to beat. Coon Rapids Bayard led 47 to 12 at the break. Reasons, problems, too many. And the touchdown. Bad snaps, missed blocks, penalties, uh, just everything in the book you can think of that puts you in a bad spot. Getting us, you know, penalties and bad blocks, getting us to second long situations you just can't dig yourself out of. What's it like being a first year team? It's exciting because we get an opportunity to do something we've never done, something our school's never done, and something these guys have never done. You know, they never had the opportunity to play varsity ball. Guys excited, varsity first year. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're all excited for the varsity season. Trying to get as many wins as we can, but just got to take one step at a time. You knew it wasn't going to be easy. Yeah, we knew it wasn't going to be easy at all. You know, we're not dumb. We, they've been playing together since they were probably you know, fifth grade, you know, we've just started, you know, freshman year, or even later than that, you know, so we're just working on building a program. So it's exciting, but at the same time, we're learning a lot of things. We're, we're having to adjust to, to the level of competition. The Eagles lost 53-24 on this day, but the learning, the adjustments continue. One thing's for sure, this bunch of birds have just begun to take flight. Heartland Christian's full of heart, and that's a good place to start. The Eagles drop to one and two with the loss to Coon Rapids. Gabe Clare, as you saw, a nice kickoff return for a touchdown. But it's in the numbers in the end, and they are down for Heartland Christian, but hopefully more kids will come out in years to come. So good luck to coach and the guys. The high school volleyball season is off and serving. Three pretty good teams look to put the block on at AL after the break. What does the world need? Iowa Western. The world is waiting. At Council Bluff Savings Bank, we take pride in our community in volunteering our time to helping individuals, families, and businesses succeed. We are Council Bluffs people operating at Council Bluffs Bank to help Council Bluffs be a better place to work and live. Hometown banking, the way it used to be. Big triangular at Abraham Lincoln and a chance for three teams to see just where they are at the beginning of the season. As Abraham Lincoln said hello to Tri-Center and St. Albert, but who said goodbye with two straight wins? Not to mention a win over a crosstown rival. The Lynx ready to rock for a new season on Thursday night, August 30th. Lost to Tri-Center last year, not this time. Lauren Meeker, one of her 10 kills. Sam Bonet and AL score three of the last four points. Kelsey Johnson with a block party in the middle. Turn the page. The Lynx out got the Trojans 25-23. Second set, AL goes on a 10-1 run. Olivia Leisinger won a hurry 11 kills. The seniors with a 1-2 punch. Lauren Meeker again. AL wins the set and the match 25-16. Now what have the Lynx been working on? All we have done the last few weeks is worked on mental toughness and taking ownership and learning to overcome uh, fear and learning how to, under, uh, to overcome that kind of thing and to stay in the game and stay focused. Everyone on our team has always played, in a, has at least played in one game. Um, we're not nervous when we go out to play, we just, we just go out and do what we know how to do. I've noticed that we've been a lot better at um, just rallying points and not getting down on ourselves during the game, so that's good. St. Albert then tries its luck with Tri-Center. No problem setting up the offense. Allie Wettendale, 15 to six Saints. Joni Thomas gets into the act, and it's too hot to handle. St. Albert wins the first set 25-16.
the Trojans reason to smile, lead by four in the second, but Katie Cook and the Saints pound home nine of the next 10 points. Kylie Ferguson winds up with one of her 13 kills. St. Albert takes the set and the match 25-21. What about this year's team? We have more, you know, I would say more experience than last year. We're deeper at a lot of positions, which last year we didn't have a lot of depth based on the fact we had very, very few girls out. We're a completely different team. We run a different offense, and we were trying out a lot of different things this year. Coach has written up a lot of different offenses for us, and we're playing a lot of different positions we've never played. We're a lot more mature. We've grown up a lot. Like we, we learned what it feels like to win a lot last year. We learned what it feels like to go stay. We know what it takes to go back. So I feel like we're a lot smarter. Okay, so the stage is set for AL St. Albert round three of the triangular. The Lynx getting it done in the first set. Lauren Meeker, one of her match high 16 kills. Did I say the senior was killing it? She was. AL wins the first set 25-19, and the Lynx fans cutting loose. But then comes the second set, tied at 17. Kylie Ferguson of the Saints serve up a little 6-2 run. Nevada Meese sets up with one of her 12 kills. St. Albert takes the second 25-21, and suddenly the Saints fans come marching in. AL jumps out 9-5 in the third deciding set. The Lynx making more plays. Delaney Bolton here gets up, and the Lynx hold off St. Albert to win the match 15-10. We lost focus severely the second game, but the third game, we kept our focus, we did the game plan, they executed really well, but if we lose focus, that's gonna be one of our major weaknesses this year. We had some errors at some key times, and we need to take care of the ball a little bit better, and you know, it just it comes down to the little things, and, and we're still working on them, and uh, we're gonna use it as a learning experience. Coach Carlson and the Lynx start out the season 2-0. St. Albert ends the night at 1-2. It has just begun. Unfortunately for us, it has come to an end. But what's in store for next week? We'll just have to wait and see. But for now, I'm JJ Davis. Thanks for joining us on the Bluff Sports Zone. And as always, I'll, I'll see you around.